Hello everybody and welcome back. Good to talk to all of you again today. Now, today we're going to talk about something a little bit different, right? When you're playing World of Warships, it is generally all about action, right? You go into battle, you see an enemy ship, you shoot the enemy ship, you do whatever objectives you got to do, you got to end up going for victory. That's the sort of the main thing. But did you know that there's actually an entire science and in some ways even an art behind the very ships that you're sailing around the high seas? Now, some of the ships, in fact, the majority of the ones that are real that you see in game are entirely reasonable. Well, some are just hilariously silly. I'm looking at you, Georgia and Henry IV. I'll get to you in a minute here. Anyways, before I start, I guess I should explain a tiny bit of the science first before getting to the actual examples. When ships are going slow, they don't tend to make very big waves. That means that the ships experience mostly frictional and viscous resistance from the water itself. Yet as the ships get faster, they start making waves. And if you've been on a ship before, you've seen them, you know, ships make waves. Now, the making of the waves requires energy. So as you go faster and faster, the waves get bigger and bigger. The bigger the wave, the more energy is required in order to make that said wave. And it's unavoidable, by the way. Eventually, you get to the point where the wave making resistance puts some pretty serious limitations onto your ship. Now, going back to when the waves are still small, you don't need a lot of power to overcome them. So let's use the Liberty ship, which was a World War II cargo ship as an example. These 14,000 ton ships made a steady 11 knots. Total power needed, 2,500 shaft horsepower. Not a lot at all. However, as the speed increases, there is a pretty massive, and I mean a pretty massive increase in the amount of wave making resistance. But how much is this increase? How much more power do you need to overcome it? It'd be utterly insane to say, okay, let's just go ahead and build a full-size ship and figure it out from there because that's a huge cost, right? And what are you going to do? Build a hull and then go, oh, wait, hold on a second. That doesn't work. Let's just break it up and make it again. See, kind of insane. doesn't really work. So at this particular point in time, in comes something called model testing and something called a fruit number. Now, fruit number, of course, is only one part of the whole thing, but it's a very interesting little part. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, the model testing thing if you've ever sort of looked at any kind of warship history, probably would you know remember that as the you know the little model being towed across a tow tank. But the fruit number thing, you're probably wondering, what on earth is that? Well, the fruit number is named after this old English guy named William Frude. He did a lot of tank testing of model ships, and he found that if you tow a scale model of a ship, the resistance value measured from the model test is roughly the same proportion as would be experienced by the real ship. To calculate a fruit number. You take the speed of the vessel in meters per second and divide it by the square root of gravity times the waterline length of the ship in meters. And of course, if you've ever done some math, uh, you know, if you can equate those two equations for the model ship and the real ship, you can figure out the things that are uh, the missing variables on the real ship, right? So that gives you sort of that correlation. Now, the fruit number is also very much connected to something called a speed length ratio which is the speed of the ship in knots divided by the square root of the ship's waterline length in feet. And that's very specific, it has to be knots and feet. If you were to graph fruit numbers or speed length ratio to resistance, you would see a curve that looks like this. For a displacement ship, which is the majority of the larger ships during World War II, the last economical point is a fruit number of 0.4 or speed length ratio of 1.34. Past that, Displacement ships can still operate. Uh, Second World War destroyers notably fall into this section, but that really is a video for another day. But they require substantial amounts of power in order to do so. And this is mostly because once you get past 0.4, uh, the length of the wave exceeds the length of the ship. And so what your ship begins to do is it begins to have to fight to climb over the wave that it itself is making. So it has to like sort of climb the, its own crest, and the stern of the ship is in the trough of the wave. Not really a good thing to do, but still sometimes necessary if you want your ships to reach certain speeds. Now, there's also, by the way, when you're thinking about building a ship, actual literal constraints, right? There's still budget constraints, docking facilities, uh, naval arms treaties, operational requirements, fuel economy, ton of other factors. And so you figure that there's not some sort of unlimited thing that you got to do, right? There's things have to be done within reason. And that's why you see a lot of convergence with naval ship design, by the way. Okay, 
So looking at the majority of the larger vessels in World of Warships, you actually see that the ones that are real, uh, they actually fall quite nicely into this domain. The Iowa, for example, has a fruit number of 0 0.335. Speed ratio is 1.125. Hood is uh, 0 0.315 on the fruit scale, 1.057 in terms of speed length. Bismarck is actually very close to Hood, by the way, 0 0.317 for the Froude uh, number and speed length ratio of 1.065. Yamato was at 0 0.28 for the Froude number and a speed length ratio of 0 0.945. All of these battleships would have propulsion plants that put out plenty of power, over six figures of shaft horsepower. The most eye-popping one generally is Iowa at 212,000 shaft horsepower. Yet the Colorado, which is a fruit number of only 0 0.255 and a speed length ratio of 0 0.85, only needs 28,900 shaft horsepower to reach its 21 knot max speed. Knowing this also allows you to look at paper ships in the game. And this is where you start to have some more fun. Let's look at Georgia, for example, right? Georgia initially looks pretty reasonable. It's a 33 knot battleship, 253 meters in length, and that, you know, leads to a fruit number of 0 0.34, a speed length ratio of 1.145, and it's plenty well within that curve. However, it is a little bit higher than the Iowa, but then again, you look at the power plant, and the Georgia was hypothetically supposed to have 230,000 shaft horsepower, which is okay. However, in game, we all know what Georgia's special feature is. It's the ability to hit that speed boost button. And then it allows it to go to 39.6 knots. Well, let's just say that if that were to really happen, we would have all entered a different dimension where the rules are all different. Because on Earth, that ship would have had a fruit number of 0 0.41, a speed length ratio of 1.374. And considering that, you know, the Georgia in game doesn't change its shape, it is the exact same shape, the amount of power that you would have needed to get that ship to get to that speed would have been somewhere in the range of 690,000 shaft horsepower. Now, that particular number, by the way, is not an exact calculation for power because the exact power calculation is obviously way more complicated and, again, outside the scope of the video. But generally, an easy-ish rule to follow is that for every four knots of speed, you double the shaft horsepower, right? So... The Georgia, once it hits its speed boost, it just like flies off the pages of reason. It's just, it's gone. <laughs> it's just completely gone. The cruisers currently that we have in World of Warships, they also operate mostly within reason, right? Like, you know, their, their, their numbers are starting to push more the, the limits, but that is to be expected of cruisers, right? The Baltimore, for example, has a food number of 0 0.378. And the Mogami has a food number of 0 0.41 which just puts it past that economical point of 0 0.4. By the way, if you actually look at the cruisers, their power plants were pretty insane. Mogami's propulsion output of 152,000 shaft horsepower is 2,000 shaft horsepower higher than Yamato, which was a significantly bigger ship. Now for fun, of course, and because we love doing this, let's look at Henry IV, right? Because I said we were going to get to these two ships. Henry IV. Totally fictional French cruiser, right? No real specifications, but if you look at the, the length, she's roughly sort of in between a Des Moines and a Moscow, which, you know, we can sort of estimate her length to be about 235 meters, roughly. Now, her base speed of 35 knots, you, you calculate the fruit number, you calculate the speed length, and you know what? She actually still works. Now, 0 0.375 on the fruit number, 1.26 for speed length. So she's still within reason. Now you look at her speed, 35 knots base speed, and you look at the propulsion plant, and it's listed in game as 220,000 shaft horsepower, which is actually reasonable. And then, of course, we also know Henry IV special feature, hit that speed boost, and she goes 43.8 knots at full speed. This is where the ship just... It's no longer a heavy cruiser. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> it just defies all the rules. Because with a fruit number of 0 0.47 and a speed length ratio of 1.58, the Henry IV in its speed boost configuration basically performs like a second World War destroyer. Just a really 
giant Second World War era destroyer. But I mean, I guess they're the French. So since their cruisers were like, well, sorry, their destroyers were like cruisers. I guess their cruisers should be like destroyers. Yeah, maybe maybe that's a French thing. Anyways, um, but to put it into a more hilarious level, the amount of power you would have needed to actually get to that speed, considering the, the hull of the ship doesn't change, would have been in excess of 880,000 shaft horsepower. Not considering the fact that the propellers are probably just cavitated and maybe even like destroyed themselves. Maybe they just like broke into pieces. Who knows? Because that power level is insane. You'd also need the equivalent of seven nuclear reactors. You know, the same ones that you put on like the Nimitz class carriers in order to output that level of power. Can't really imagine what would happen if you had that power plant and you got hit by armor piercing shells in battle. Hmm. Maybe make Chernobyl look like Picnic, yeah? Anyways, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. Slightly different than what I've done before, but I hope it was at least interesting. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Aside from all that, I want to wish you all a very happy new year. Uh, hopefully 2021 is significantly better than the 2020 that we just left behind. Aside from all that, take care, have a good one, and I'll talk to all of you again next time.